Hi, it's Arielle from PMQ for Two, and today I'm here with Jenna from Holland Homes, and we're gonna answer all of your burning design questions about the house building process. I'm bringing Jenna in because while we're in the midst of building our home, I didn't think I'd be the best expert for this, so I'm coming into it with a local expert. Jenna, introduce yourself. I'm Jenna Holland. Um, my husband, Steve, and I, we own Holland Homes here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and we build custom homes as well as spec homes, and I work independently of Steve with uh, another technical designer and we design for um, interior remodels or just like room refresh for interior decorating. So between building the spec homes and the custom homes with Steve, um, we have that business and then I have my own business on the side. So if somebody who was watching this said, hey, I really want to work directly with Jenna, they can always reach out to you and get that going. Yes, we do um, virtual design as well. So um, I through my website, I just get clients to send me photos and measurements and then I can design either for an upcoming renovation or if you just wanna like purchase some new furniture and some new textiles and paint, then I can help with that too. Worth it. Uh, I'm gonna say absolutely worth it just because even people like myself, I still wanna pick the brain of somebody else and I'm going through the build process and the design process. It's nice to bounce your ideas and thoughts off other people. So we're gonna dive right into these questions that I got from you guys. Um, first one being, and these are in no particular order, there is no logical or you know narrative thread to these questions, they're just boom questions. So first one, what is the best tile to hide a mess? Someone suggested black tile, black grout. I'm assuming this is for a backsplash, but what do you think? I actually, black tile and black grout is the same kind of idea as a dark hardwood floor and it will show a lot of dust and mm -hmm. dirt. So black is actually probably the worst color to use to hide dirt. Um, something with a veining or gray is probably your best bet for a backsplash tile or um, even a floor tile as well. Gray is safe and something that's got a little bit of a pattern or veining will hide a lot of dirt. And I think we're in agreement here. Do not tile your countertops. No. <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> Ceramic tile countertops thing. were a thing and I yeah. couldn't imagine like preparing food on tile and the grout and yeah no don't do tile countertops and that's an excellent point too when it comes to floors right now obviously we're seeing a lot of lighter floors and it's for a reason if you have pets if you have kids you're not going to see that collection of dust and dirt everywhere that you would on really dark floors yeah and i mean dark wood is making a huge comeback right now um but i'd say more is like an elevated accent that's, yeah that was yeah. more it's kind of more into cabinetry and shelving and furniture but light especially light oak hardwood mm. that is still the the beautiful and very functional choice for hardwood flooring. Couldn't agree more. Hint mm -hmm. of what we're going yes. with for ours. Um, another question that we got was, um, is there a special insurance consideration for building a home? And I think, you know, we kind of came up with this answer together, but why don't you explain? Yeah, so when you decide to build new construction, um, in, in particular where we live, there's a few different ways of funding that, um, if you're working with a bank or whatever. So there is a turnkey option, which is, uh, the builder actually owns the lot and the home until completion. Uh, so insurance will differ depending on whether you do turnkey and the other option is construction draws. So you own the lot and you pay the builder um, in payments and installments and usually that's quarterly. So insurance will depend on, um, on your finance on the funding and whatever, however you're paying for the home. Yeah. Um, I will say that from our own experience and our own conversations with the bank, turnkey is much more affordable and more people are doing it these days because there are less financial considerations, there's less you know other paperwork involved. So if you're doing turnkey, it's the builder who covers it because it's their lot, their work. Right, and that and the builder owns the home too until it's completed. So there's a little bit of, of risk with the, with the client in that sense because if something were to go wrong, uh, then the builder owns the home until it's yeah. done. But but there's there's pros and cons to both. So uh, my advice is always to meet with your banker or your broker and just kind of come up with whatever works best with you and the builder. This is where a realtor comes in handy, guys. And mm -hmm. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Our realtor saved our butt when we were negotiating our contract. Um, not because it was a bad contract or anything, but it's just the realtor helped point out things and explain things to us, specifically in regards to like who pays taxes on the lot while it's being built, what's insurance like, et cetera. So get a realtor. They will walk you through all of these questions because of course these answers are specific right. to where we live. And sometimes, uh, depending on where you live, uh, the builder and the build company, they have a realtor that they work with too. So you can use their realtor, but it's also helpful to bring in your own for a different kind of perspective. Exactly, never hurts, never yeah. hurts. Um, when designing a house, uh, what are what, what are some good tools or uh, uh, resources people can use if they're having a hard time 
visualizing the design process. That can be tricky. Like I can think spatially, my husband can sort of think spatially, but not everybody else can. So if I walk into a room and I say, okay, I see that there, that there, that there, that there, I can see it. I may not always be able to see it. What do you recommend for people who can't? Right, and I mean, obviously my first advice is to hire a designer and work with them to help you visualize. But if that's not an option, then uh, there's a lot of different apps and programs that you can use to create your vision boards. Um, Canva is an app on your phone. It's easy. You can just plug in your photos of your light fixtures and your plumbing fixtures and your cabinet colors and your countertop and kind of see how it all works together. Um, another good program to use, um, especially in visualizing the size of the space and your windows and all of that is called Floor Planner. So Floor Planner is just a website. I believe there's a free trial. And I'll drop a, a link in the yeah, description. And uh, a YouTube tutorial for Floor Planner would help to get you started. And I've had clients come to me and have like their whole house already kind of designed on floor planner and it's it's great we tweak it obviously but it's like it's 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 very helpful for visualizing a space and i think you told me too that you can you can easily find people's floor plans online um that, yes. like, that are already built and usually there'll be photos to accompany it so if you're like i really like how this one spot lays out you can go check out the after photos right and that's one of our when we before we meet with clients to build with them i always tell them to look online um, there's a few different websites. It just if you go on Pinterest and search like four bedroom uh, house plan, you can find a couple of different house plans. So before you meet with your builder, it's important if you have an idea, even if you have a couple of house plans that you like, what you don't like about them, what you do like about them, it's just a good starting plan. Oh yeah, starting I, point. I'd say even knowing what you don't want is a big one. Like I remember wedding dress shopping. I walked into one of the boutiques and was like, I don't want this and I don't want that and I don't want that. Yes. And, and she I, was like, great, you're not gonna look at half of this. And I'm gonna go back to this wedding dressing because once you have your house plan and once you have kind of the theme of the house mm -hmm. and the palette, uh, it's like a wedding dress, you need to stop looking at other styles. Yes. Once you've decided that you wanna do like modern farmhouse, for example, um, and you've already kind of ordered stuff, then you need to stop looking at other house styles because you're just gonna like second guess everything and then it might feel a little disjointed. disjointed. So yeah. once you figured stuff out, you need to just stop. That's thinking. how you end up with like change of scope costs adding up on your bill, change right? Change orders. Yeah, yeah, change orders. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they can get you in the end. Change so, orders are, yeah, they so can add up. A change order is when um, you have to change something, I'd say pretty significant on the floor plan or the scope of the work that the, the builder is doing and you have to like put it in writing and then I think there's a cost incurred on it there to account be. for time. Yeah, for yeah. It. It, change orders, uh, and they happen, it's it's normal it's, and it's, it's, it's expected, but um, yeah, there can be a cost for change orders. So usually before you even start the build, um, most of your finishes and the overall floor plan, and window plan, all of that has been decided on. And in this climate, in this area where we live, a lot of that is ordered before you even start because things yeah. are taking forever to come to this part of the world. So <laughs> change orders, yeah, they usually will cost you money mm -hmm. and they can also cost a lot of time, which yes. is another thing. They can put you back. And when you're waiting for your house to get built and you're renting somewhere or you're in a smaller home and you want to get out of that home, then yeah. change orders are going to delay things. Because so I can imagine like if you want to suddenly change the placement of a window, you have to bring the framers back in. But if the framers are already onto another job that, you know, that's just like the well, perfect yeah. example of the backup. And window sizes are done like in the very early state. Windows and plumbing is done are done very early in the stages of a build. So yeah. if you wanna like add a shower or add a wall mounted faucet after your exterior walls are up, it's not easy to do. So no. you have no. to have everything decided very early. Okay, so speaking of change orders, what are some things that, you know, say you're building your dream long-term home or even just a home you, you, you know, you wanna be in for a while, but you can't afford to do all the finishes that you wanna do right from the get-go. What are some things that you should absolutely invest in from the jump and what are some things you can undo or change four, five, 10 years from now? Okay, so my number one thing to spend money on is the the layout and the the efficiency of your home. Yep. So those are hard to change. Especially um, here they, in Canada. Yes, and they affect everything about your home. So invest in your windows, mm -hmm. um, spend the money on good quality windows, and really take the time to think about your layout of your home and how that's gonna work. Um, maybe invest in some really good insulation or our, our company uses a zip product. Uh, it's a sheathing that's more airtight or watertight. My husband, he's big on that. He could explain that in detail more than I can. Email Steve. Yeah, so you can contact him. He'll give you the lowdown. But, um, or you can follow um, Robert, Robert Rosen uh, with Huberwood and they have more updates on the zip product. Anyway, 
So those are the two things, your structural and your floor plan. And my third item that you should spend your money on is your flooring. Yeah. Your flooring in your home, it affects so much of the overall feel and style and design of the home. And it's really hard to change. It's it's something that it will up, like, it's not just, it's a hard renovation. You're gonna have to move everything out. Mm -hmm. It's messy, it's dirty. So structure, energy efficiency, and your flooring, spending money there. And like everybody thinks flooring is an easy one, but think about how much goes on top of the flooring. Your baseboards go on top of your flooring. Any built-ins go on top of your flooring. Your kitchen cabinets, your appliances, your stairs, right. like everything sits on the flooring. So you want that to be rock solid, even if it's not the color you want, at least the quality, right? Right, and a couple areas that you can save in the initial point of a build mm -hmm. uh, would be your countertops. Yep. In a lot of cabinet plans, it, it, especially in Ireland, if it's a bigger piece, for the most part, it's sometimes easy to just pop off your laminate and put in quartz later on. Not always, but sometimes it can be easy. Depends, I guess, on your sink mounting. Sink and your, your, and your cabinetry, there. like these ones behind us, they go all the way to the counter, so we can't necessarily just pop that off. It would be a big deal to change change these. Yeah. Um, something that you can save money on too and save for down the road and get the perfect one is your kitchen backsplash. Uh, tile is something that you can save in the initial part and then later on really look for the the tile that you want and have the money and spend to put it down so that surprises me i would have yeah. thought that it would have been like a really messy thing to pop no, off and redo no tile is not that bad um i guess it's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the last things that goes down in a build so gotcha. it's it, not in a shower i mean a shower and tub and all that but your kitchen backsplash is one thing that will go on it towards the end so you can save and 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 later on get the one that you want and the last thing that I would say, and I, this hurts my designer heart, but window treatments, um, yeah. there's something that you want them to be done right. So take your time, live in your home for a little bit, and then spend the money and get good custom, not going to say custom, but good quality window treatments because they like by all means put ikea space. in your bedroom yeah <laughs> just stick a little like blind in there for now yeah. or you know like i don't know i don't want to say tack up a blanket but don't do that no. do a temporary thing for now <laughs> if you can that's not damaging yep and then later save the money and invest in good quality window treatments because they elevate an entire space and you know anybody who's bought and sold a home recently knows what comes in the sale and it's usually things that are attached to the walls like window treatments right yeah and in when we were looking at homes we noticed um there was a lot of really crappy jobs that had been done with like rod placement and brackets and you could see just poor patch jobs and it's like no one no one wants to see that so get spend the time do it right once do it right and i can't believe i'm the person saying that but spend the time and do it right once <laughs> yeah so that would be the the things that you can add countertop tile mm -hmm. and window treatments save on those and then you can do them at a later date okay so speaking of saving money what are do you have any process or um fixture tips for people who want to save money in the build like it's not that they're going to update it later it's just this doesn't need to be high end like where do you sit on that yeah i'm not like a numbers or like spreadsheet kind of gal we were talking about yeah. this earlier but my biggest piece of advice is to have a couple a two two lists and one of your list is your must have start from the top things that you must have in a home mm -hmm. And then have another list you're like you know i can maybe kind of splurge in this area like a lot of clients that we meet with their one of their must-haves is a metal roof but then we get talking and it's like it's very expensive for a metal roof mm -hmm. and your metal roof is going to outlive you so if you plan on moving within 10 or 20 years your shingle roof is actually going to be just as efficient it's going to like your resale is going to be okay so mm -hmm. certain things put in your must-have list but and you can come back to that, but there's always, and then have a list, like maybe your flooring, it's important, but you know you can get nice flooring that's not a fortune, so. Laminate these days and a vinyl, vinyl. are really, yeah. really so, nice. And just go back to those lists when it comes to like trying to save money, go back to those and say, you know what? I really, really wanted this metal roof, but we can save a ton of money and the shingle roof will look just fine. And maybe you do some canopies with a metal roof on those, so you still get a little bit of metal roof look, but mm -hmm. you're saving money. Mm -hmm. That's my one piece of advice. Uh, I'm, I'm not the numbers person in our business, uh, Steve is. He gives me a budget to work within and I just try my hardest to stay in the budget, but. I'll speak from experience here. Happen. <laughs> yeah, so far Dan is the spreadsheet person. Dan has a running um, active spreadsheet that runs regressions on all the numbers that we put into it. He's a spreadsheet wizard, I don't know where he gets it, but uh, we are on top of that. It's very easy with change orders and other things that you yes. decide to throw in for costs to creep up. So it's not even necessarily saving money, but just being aware of the money that you're spending, I think, is gonna be your biggest kind of way of not being 
you know, gobsmacked at the end when the builder hands you a bill and it's sixty thousand more than you thought, right? Yeah, and like, don't and don't be afraid to yeah. to call to keep track and and to compare with the builder. Yeah. I mean, builders are very busy and mistakes can happen and and numbers and that can happen. So and sometimes they appreciate like you know, thank you for catching that. I missed yes. it. Don't be afraid to to question where your money is going and to compare what you have for there's there's no harm in that. No, and I'd say like whereas, you know, I'm working more with a boutique builder and you guys are more of a boutique builder. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying into a big spec development, um, you know, you might be one of thirty homes being built that year. It the more attention you no one will care more about your home than you. If this is true. It is. It's I mean, I do say since I work with my spouse, um, our pillow talk is our clients' homes, but it's true. It's it's a lot of people's homes become their baby. Like mm -hmm. they're they put so much time and effort into their the building and the design of their home. So you're exactly right. No one will care more about the home than you. So. And then, yeah, that's not to say that the builder doesn't care. It's just he won't have the same or they won't have the same fanatical attention to detail that right. you might with a I mean, auto regression right, too, spreadsheet. It just doesn't hurt to say. <laughs> You know, I got had this number for this. Can you just yeah, it doesn't hurt to do that. Don't yeah. don't feel bad if you have to do that. Never hurts to do that. Um, what are some trends that you're seeing in house building these days that you are happy to see arriving or you're kind of like, eh, it's a blip, it won't last? Oh, I'm seeing a lot more color, which is great. Uh the gone are the days of that very Scandinavian minimal black white mm -hmm. oak. Like the minimalism is is on its way out. I mean, it's still every everything will go out of style eventually. Everything goes out of style. Yeah, so time and a place. I always say, do what you want to do for your home. But I'm seeing a lot more color, and I'm actually seeing. Um, and we're doing this in our home, so of course I'm biased. But the return of clay colored windows as opposed to white or black. So um, a little, we're getting a little bit away from the modern farmhouse, the white siding with the black windows. It's still very much desired, especially for resale. Mm -hmm. like it's a, it is a classic timeless look, but mm -hmm. we're getting a little bit away from that and seeing more dark wood as opposed to the lighter oak and more tone on tone and more, a lot of like taupe and gray and beige and white all kind of mixed within. Yeah, and I think, you know, after everybody's spending so much time at home uh, the past couple of months, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we've just all had this much more time to reflect on the spaces we live in, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it means that we're seeing some really interesting, I think, changes happening in design. Yeah, and another thing, too, that I, I'm seeing way more of is the return of the curve. Like in the furniture, there's a lot more curve and more archways mm -hmm. in design. And I love a good, like, curved top door. I yeah. really wanted one. We just it didn't work on our floor plan, but gosh damn, I wanted a curved door, I know, especially front door. Yes, front big door. big curved front yeah. door. Oh, yeah. And then me. like five years ago, I'd be like, no way, no curves in our home, straight, clean, modern lines. And now <laughs> it's like the return of the curve. So, yeah. Okay, how many sinks is too many sinks for a man floor? Never. Um, <laughs> I don't think you can have too many sinks. I mean, as long as it makes sense to have a sink. I mean, you don't. Uh, it just depends on how you're going to use your home and. That, I mean, that was a trick question on my yeah. part, right? Yeah, and there's like, a lot of things on in what, this main yeah. floor. But it, it depends what, what the home is going to be used for. Yeah, and it, and, and it depends, too. It's 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 more about the actual fixtures that you're choosing and, and how they're going to be used in the placement. I mean, this house has a main sink here, and then a few steps away is a butler's pantry with a sink. But that's just off the dining room, so it Right, sense. it's off the dining room, so it's kind of like the bar area. So they could have went without a sink, but it is gonna, they're going to appreciate that yeah, sink. Absolutely. But plumbing fixtures is a good way to cut down on costs too. So sometimes if you do have, maybe if you're trying to save a little bit of money and you do have like a butler's pantry or a wet bar, maybe it turns into a dry bar and you'll save money on the fixtures and the labor for the plumber too. So mm -hmm. something to think about. Yeah, but you can always have the, the initial rough-ins put, just not finish them. You're right. That's yeah. something you can do at a later date. You can, yeah. The rough-ins are the most important thing to have done. And like I said, plumbing rough-ins are done very early on in a build and it's very hard to go back and add those if, mm -hmm. if you decide five years from now that you want to add a sink somewhere, so. Yeah, yeah, not easy. No, so. What about closets? How, like, how do you feel about closets? I mean, in many homes, it's just kind of a door in the bedroom and there's a rack and a shelf, that's it. But if you were going to spend the time kind of creating more of an experience for yourself in your closet, how do you feel about custom closets? Like, you can spend 30 grand with California closets or you can go to Ikea and get some mom. Like, where's the it in between? It depends on how, where it is on your must-have list. I, myself, don't own a lot of clothing and I have two little kids. So my clothing is like, it's like pajamas or workout clothes that can get dirty. And, yeah, <laughs> we're active wear to like <laughs> go to the park. But uh, uh, so I don't personally at this time in my life, uh, like and we're building at the same time. Yeah. So my, our home, we have this space we have built and planned for a nice closet space. 
but we will not invest in the cabinetry right now. Again, it can be something down the road that we'll add, but I think again, it's it depends on, on your list, your must have list. If you have a lot of really nice clothes or purses and bags and you want them to be displayed, mm -hmm. but I think if you do talk to a lot of people who have spent a lot of money in their closet, um, they would say it, it was worth it, but they, they thought it would, like they thought they would get more use of it than they did. It could be one place if you're, again, you're looking to save, you can cut back and spend it on the place that everyone gets to see. But I feel like it's a nice to have, not a need to have. It is. It's one of those things that yeah. when it comes to push and shove and you're like, oh, I need to save money somewhere, you can kind of... If you've got like three million to build a home, you're not watching my YouTube video. So like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you never know. But no, it's like a, it's a good place to cut back yeah. on. But yeah. it's again, it's it all comes down to what you want and spend your money. But just know there has to be a lot of give and take. So if you're going to spend money in your closet and you need to save somewhere else, then it all comes down to what you want in your lifestyle and what's important to you. I think like, that's great. I think that's great. Yeah. But to me, it's at this point in my life, I don't, I don't need a big fancy closet. I don't, I wish I did. I want to be like, I want to have that big fancy closet, but I feel like I, I feel like I need the space just for myself. I, I enjoy getting dressed in the morning, even though I have like a capsule wardrobe and wear the same things every day. Yes. I like having that space that's entirely my own. That's not my office. And that's yeah. not the shared bedroom. Right? Agreed. The space is one thing. Yeah. And I, I will say don't, if you have the space to do some type of a walk-in then do it because mm -hmm. it is nice at the end of the day to come to a bedroom that's tidy. Yeah. So you can close the door to your off to your closet and it can be a mess, mm -hmm. but at least your bedroom space where you sleep is calming and you don't have clothes all over the bed or all over the floor which is what my house is currently like same but don't come to my house today me neither don't so go there i have two last questions for you um when it comes to a bathroom how do you feel about having a separate shower and a separate tub this is something that in our uh principal bathroom we've decided to separate so we have a tub and we have a shower and i think it's going to be great um, but I, I always, you know, see these romantic images and this is probably where I need to stop looking, obviously, <laughs> with the beautiful clawfoot tubs with like the hanging things for the showers and stuff. And I'm like, do I want it? Could that space be used better differently? And it's like, no, I want to be able to have a bath. I want my husband to be able to have a shower or vice versa. And I think they're right. different spaces that just need different treatment. It all depends. Again, it comes down to the space that yeah. you have to work with and, and resale. I know if, if you are planning on reselling one day, um, a separate tub and shower is, is more valuable. So mm -hmm. definitely that's one thing. And, and if you have the space and it is nice, I mean, I do know people that have a separate tub and they've never used it in their life. So I like to, I like to have baths. So I, like, I like, especially when I was pregnant, baths yeah, were like I my thing. So, but it's, it comes down to the space that you have to work with. Um, if you can fit it, then yes. But cause sometimes it's just going to be, that there's an empty space there or you're doing a massive shower, which yeah. is great if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But think about resale and I think most homes these days need to have like at least one bathtub. If you're in a situation oh, yes. where you have two bathrooms, at least then they're full bathrooms, Agreed. at least one should have a bathtub. Oh yes. Every house needs a bathtub. And yeah. now that I'm a mom, I totally understand. I've gone to hotels without bathtubs. And the worst. Like, where, Unexpectedly the, the worst. I need to bath my child. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Have one tub in your house. It doesn't matter if it's the, the bathroom down in the basement, just have it in the house somewhere because if a parent is buying a home or someone elderly who needs to bath, or if you like break your arm, break your leg or something, you can't yeah. get a shower, this bath is bath. important to have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the last question is built-in furniture. Yes or no? And what do you mean by building? Like banquet seating? Banquet seating, you know, what if you wanted to build a table as part of it? What like you can build anything at home, right? Um, and like, for example, in our build, we're building a banquet off our island for our dining table. Um, it's going to be part of the home. It's going to go with the home, right? But we could have just as easily built the table permanently there as well. Yeah, I love the idea of built-in furniture. Um, sometimes you can get a little carried away with built-ins and it can be like built-ins everywhere. Um, and it can feel too designed and too traditional. Um, so sometimes if you just, if you have built-ins in the whole space all over the place, I mean, you got built-ins by the fireplace, you got a ba built-in banquette, you've got built-in cabinetry, then it, sometimes it's nice to just take one of those out and instead invest in a nice piece of furniture that if you move it can come with you and then mm -hmm. you can change it out easier down the road when the styles kind of change so i like the idea of some built-in furniture i love a banquette especially if the space calls for a banquette yeah. sometimes they can look a little forced if they're mm -hmm. not if the banquette is literally too big for your family to sit on and it, it still looks empty like probably didn't even yeah if, if it's and a lot of house plans will actually like allocate for a, a breakfast nook or banquet mm -hmm. seating it will say that so Again, it is something that you can add later on. It's not easy because with backing and stuff for the, the drywall and for all that, it's not as easy to add, but you can add it eventually. If you decide you wanted to build in a bench for your breakfast snook or something, you can just do your table for now and then build it in later. So I'm all for it if it 
if it works. Don't force it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys, this is, according to my phone clock, a whole 25, 25 minutes of questions. Minutes. Wow. But that actually flew by, um, at least on this end. It did. Yeah. And we didn't have to stop, really, either. No. Like, no. that's crazy. No stop starts. I'm probably going to run this as one take. Yeah. Uh, so if you're still here, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any more questions or you want to see a part two, a part three, whatever, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe.